One might think that given that very strong commitment to the value of liberty and the principles of democracy, that one might adopt what the US Constitution also adopts, which is in Article 4.4, something called the Guarantee Clause. All states in the United States are guaranteed to have, that is, must have, a Republican, all, small r, a form of government. And with our 14th Amendment, of course, all states have to provide equal protection of the laws for all persons who are in the US. Why not do that globally if you really believe in those principles the way that he genuinely does? Well, this is not what Mill argues for internationally. Instead, of course, he argues for non-intervention as a general rule among civilized countries. And he says that it's so for two very important reasons. The first is that imposing liberty, good as it is, and democracy, good as it is, is radically inauthentic. That is, unless people choose it for themselves, what does it mean to say that they're acting democratically, that they're determining collectively their, their form of government in life? Moreover, there's no really universal form of free government. Authentic freedom is the freedom to make up your own version of it. Let me give you a more concrete example. Think of the US and the UK, two card-carrying liberal democracies if you ever had to find two. One of them, of course, has a hereditary head of state and has an established religion, and the other, so far, does not. So that's a very different world, equally legitimate. Uh, both of them making ex equivalently strong claims to liberty and democratic government. So first of all, it would be inauthentic to attempt to impose liberty and democracy around the world. Second, for Mill and other liberals, it's a good thing. He also warns us that trying to do so would have bad consequences. And here's where his utilitarianism creeps back in. He says that if a free or democratic government is pulled out of, let's call it the knapsack of an invading army that is attempting to impose such a government, one established by force, there are three likely outcomes that come from that act of imposition. First of all, the local liberals, call them knapsack liberals, because they lack effective political support from below, will collapse as soon as the interveners leave. The only way you can establish a government, he thinks, is through what he calls arduous struggle. That is sacrificing for it, organizing for it, building support across a community so that the citizens are prepared to participate, pay taxes, risk their lives if, if necessary in an army or a police force. Without that, government cannot survive. And so if you try to just pull out some individuals from a knapsack, run up a flag, and call themselves a free independent government, the most likely outcome is they will collapse, according to Mill. The second thing he, he hypothesizes, OK, you've brought in some liberals who claim to be good liberals and set them up. But what then happens is that they discover they have very little popular support, very little popular support. And they discover that the only way to stay in power or keep themselves alive is to act forcibly, despotically. So rather than having brought a free government, you've brought simply another autocracy and experienced all the cost of war through invasion. Thirdly, the interveners who pull out this knapsack good liberals and put them into power realize that they're so weak that they're likely to collapse and say to themselves, we can't allow our allies to fall apart. And so then the interveners never leave. And what you've created in those circumstances is an empire, not a free government. So those are the three, a new civil war, a new autocracy, an empire, he says, are the three likely consequences of trying to impose a free government on a country that's not been able to win it for itself.